When I graduated with my STEM degree, I thought there were only two paths. Go get a PhD or work in the lab for the next 40 years. And honestly, I really want to be honest with you. I've been trying to look at my life and what I want to do with my life and sort of make a five-year, ten-year plan. And I realized that I don't want to always be in the lab. And it made me wonder, like, what's next for me beyond the lab? And so after having these thoughts in my head, I started searching and searching and trying to figure out what's out there. Honestly, it's not easy to find, (laughs) but I realized that there's a whole world of untraditional STEM career paths out there that no one really talks about. No one. Like it was so hard for me to search, but like I had to dive, dive in deep to find these careers and they are careers that are flexible and creative and sometimes even more impactful than the traditional ones and it's so crazy to think that like why don't they teach us that like teach us that at schools it's just like so frustrating to me but anyways if you've ever felt stuck thinking you have to choose the safe or traditional route stick with me Because by the end of this episode, you might realize that the best career for you is the one that no one talks about. Welcome back to When in STEM podcast. I'm your friend in STEM, Mary. I'm so excited to have you here. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. So I'm someone who followed a pretty classic STEM route. I did my education, got my master's training, internship, and then uh, I started getting into the biotech world. Like very, very classic, nothing special. Maybe the only special thing is that I don't have a PhD, but very normal. But here's the thing. Along the way, I started seeing people take different routes, different paths. I'm like, wait a minute, like, can I do that too? I started seeing friends who went to the science communication business or people who went down the science data route or the consultancy route. I started seeing CEOs of biotech companies without PhDs. I did not think that was possible for a CEO to not have a PhD. So it made me wonder, like, what if I want to be a CEO? Do I have to get a PhD? How can I get there? And it just made me realize that STEM isn't a one size fits all anymore. It's not. It's not like what it used to be 30, 40, 50 years ago where STEM equals lab. It's not that way anymore. Even if you started a traditional route, just know that you're not stuck there. Your skills can open way more doors than you can think. And it's so crazy to think that this is our lives now. We have those opportunities and we are able to diversify ourselves in, in, in this field. So that's why this month's theme is untraditional STEM career paths. To show you all the different and exciting ways your career can grow even if it's not what you first expected. I want to quickly highlight a few guests I've had on this podcast who've shared their own inspiring journeys. If Just a side note, if you haven't watched their episodes, pause now and go. I have great guests and I know you learned something because I learned something. I learned a lot as well. So first, we I had Chloe Kirk on my podcast. She's also known as Chloe the Scientist on Instagram. And her story started off as a PhD student where she pivoted from the lab to patent law. Patent law. She proved that you don't have to stay in research to stay a scientist, which is for me, I never thought that was an option. I don't know about you, but for me, didn't know that you could go down that route. And one thing that really stuck with me was how she kept her scientist identity, even after leaving the lab, even after pursuing that patent law. And I feel like we all have this problem where we're like, oh, if we leave the lab, we're not going to be a scientist anymore. And she highlights that your skills and passion, they don't disappear, they evolve with you. And that's the beauty of STEM. The skill sets that you acquire in different environments, you can apply them in different places. Then my guest, Stephanie Hirschman, she spent over a decade in academia. She did everything perfect. She did her master's, her PhD, her postdoc. You look at her, she's picture perfect. She did everything right. 
But in the episode, she opened up the emotional side of chasing publications, burnout, and the tough decision to leave academia. It's really tough to make that decision. And kudos to her for doing it because I know a lot of people struggle with that transition. But Stephanie's story is a powerful, powerful reminder that it's okay to choose yourself and it's okay to redefine your success if it's not what you originally thought it's going to be. Most recently, I had Andrea, she's a pharmacist, come on my podcast where she walked away from the traditional hospital and leaped into medical communications at L'Oreal. She's using her pharmacy background in a creative strategic way connecting science and communication in one of the biggest beauty brands in the world honestly between me and you i did not know as a pharmacist you could do it and also if you don't have a pharmacy background you could also do it apparently from my research from our conversation i loved her mindset where she said your degree is a launch pad not a life sentence Remember, your degree just gives you the edge that, like, hey, I'm educated, hire me. But it's what you make of yourself is what helps you grow in, in life. Each of these conversations also show that your career, it doesn't have to follow a straight line. It's fine if it doesn't follow a straight line. In fact, the most fulfilling paths are often the ones you've never planned for. If you're even a little curious about doing something different, here's a simple place to start. I'll be giving you some reflection questions <laughs> for you to understand what you truly want and sort of set these milestones or goals for yourself. So ask yourself, what skills do I have beyond my degree? There's more to than just your degree. Second question, what parts of my work energizes me the most? Is it problem solving? Is it teaching? Is it writing? Is it leading? Write that down. Focus, reflect, and see what energizes you. Third question, who do I know? Or who can I find who's doing something different? Who is it? Find that person, look at what they're doing, and see if that's something you want to do. Because the best way you can learn is from someone who's already done it. Sometimes the first step to a new direction is simply asking better questions. You will never grow or never succeed if you're just sitting around and doing nothing about it. Go seek opportunities, go ask these questions because that's what's going to help you grow and help you figure out what you want to do next in life. If you're ready to start exploring, here are some steps and resources. All these steps and resources are going to be in my description down below. So don't worry if I'm speaking too fast, speaking too slow. It's all linked in my description. So step one, one thing I want you to do is get curious about new fields. Some things you could do to that is follow pages like science magazine careers, nature careers, and biotechcareers.org. You could also browse job boards like angel lists. These are mostly for startups or seismic. I think that's how we pronounce it. I don't know. But um, they are STEM jobs outside academia. Some other steps that you could take is build transferable skills. Try to expand beyond lab work. Try to look at different skills that you can build. You could go to Coursera or Education X or LinkedIn Learning and see the different skill sets that you can learn to help yourself grow and understand where are your strengths are. You could also focus on skills like project management, communication, Business basics, some things you could do is if you're currently working for a company, try to talk and seek out to people who are already doing that job. Ask if you could shadow them, ask if you could watch them, because that way, once you see it, if you're interested, you'll be like, oh, this is something I want to do. Step three, network beyond your field. I know we talk a lot about networking, but please, it's so important. Join some groups like STEM peers, women in bio or LinkedIn groups, attend networking events other than scientific conferences try to branch out and i know we talk a lot about networking on my podcast i have an episode coming up with a guest we talk about the importance of networking we will be covering how to network what to do after networking what to do during networking worth just everything you could ever think of my guests and i will be discussing it in my upcoming episode so don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date and just like learn all about networking even if you're not ready to leap today just seeing what's out there can be a game changer just like trying to 
get this information because you could sort of pivot and structure your way and your life based on the things that you've seen and the things that have appealed to you. I'm so grateful for where I am right now. But if there's one thing I wish someone told me earlier, it's this. You are not locked into one version of success. You are not locked in a box. You are not. Remember that. If anything, just remember this from this episode. So from these three episodes, I've learned so much. And I hope you have too about untraditional career paths in STEM. I don't know they were available, but now we know. And that's why I created this podcast is to bring this information to you so you don't have to go far. You could just come here and just learn all about it. If this episode resonated with you, send it to a friend who needs a little nudge to think a little bit outside the box. And if you want more untraditional career stories, let me know. I've got some guests lined up who have amazing and crazy backgrounds and stories. You won't even believe it. Thank you for tuning in to When in STEM podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and share with a friend. See you in the next episode.